NASA still can't replace the dying ISS after 25 years of trying. VAST just built a luxury space hotel in two years that left SpaceX absolutely stunned. While NASA's billion-dollar lab leaks air, the startup created maple-walled suites with Starlink Internet. The impossible just happened. But why can't NASA do what a crypto-funded startup did? Let's dive right in. Here's the uncomfortable truth NASA doesn't want you to know. The International Space Station is literally dying. Air leaks happening weekly. Failed computer systems older than most astronauts. Cooling pumps breaking down every few months. This $150 billion science lab has become a floating death trap. And NASA spent 25 years trying to replace it with nothing. While NASA throws billions at contractors who keep missing deadlines, something impossible just happened. A startup nobody heard of three years ago just built what NASA couldn't, a luxury space hotel that left SpaceX executives speechless. But here's the part that'll blow your mind. They did it with crypto money and a team smaller than NASA's coffee budget committee. Meet Jed McCaleb, the guy who helped create Ripple and made billions watching numbers go up on screens. In 2021, he looked at NASA's decades of failure and thought something most billionaires wouldn't dare. I can build a better space station in my garage. Most crypto billionaires buy sports teams or islands. Michaela bought himself a space program. He founded VAST with one impossible goal. Prove that private companies can do in years what NASA can't do in decades. The result? Haven 1, a space station so advanced it makes the ISS look like a hardware store from the 1990s. But here's where it gets absolutely insane. Picture floating 250 miles above Earth in what looks like a five-star hotel room. Maple wood panels line the walls. Actual wood in space. Soft LED lighting makes everything feel warm and human. There's a massive 1.1-meter dome window giving you a 180-degree view of Earth spinning below every 90 minutes. This isn't some concept art. This is Haven 1, launching May 2026. The entire station is just 45 cubic meters, smaller than most studio apartments. Yet designed to house four astronauts in luxury, the ISS could never match. While NASA's astronauts sleep by wedging themselves into cabinets like human cargo, Haven 1 has inflatable beds that apply gentle pressure, like weighted blankets in zero gravity. But wait, there's something NASA's engineers said was impossible. Here's what left SpaceX stunned. VAST didn't try to reinvent rocket science. They took NASA's proven shuttle life support system, the simple open-loop design, and perfected it with Silicon Valley thinking. Instead of over-engineering everything like NASA, they asked one question. What if we just built what actually works? The genius move nobody saw coming? When SpaceX's Dragon capsule docks to Haven 1, it doesn't just drop off astronauts and leave. It becomes part of the station, instantly doubling the living space. It's like parking your RV next to your cabin and suddenly having twice the room. Think about this. NASA spent decades building redundant backup systems for everything. VAST just uses SpaceX as their backup. One decision saved them years of development and billions of dollars. This is why NASA's traditional approach is dying. Now here's where things get absolutely mind-blowing. Haven 1 will be the first space station connected to Starlink. While ISS astronauts deal with laggy video calls that sound like they're underwater, Haven 1 astronauts will have gigabit internet speeds. What does this mean? Real-time 4K video calls with Earth. Massive scientific data uploads happening in seconds instead of hours. Maybe even live streaming from orbit like it's just another Tuesday at the office. Scientists could collaborate in real-time across continents while floating above them. But there's something NASA desperately doesn't want you to know about why this matters so much. In May 2024, something happened at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center that shocked everyone in the room. VAST brought Haven 1's life support system for the ultimate test, the same facility that's been pushing aerospace boundaries since we went to the moon. They sealed the system, injected chemical contaminants that would build up with four people living inside for weeks, then turned on the filters. The goal, prove Haven 1 could maintain clean, breathable air in worst-case scenarios. The result? Haven 1 didn't just pass. 
it exceeded every benchmark NASA had set. This was the moment NASA realized a crypto-funded startup had just out-engineered them using simpler, more elegant solutions. The same agency that put humans on the moon got schooled by a company that didn't exist three years ago. Here's what's absolutely mind-blowing about Vast's timeline. They announced Haven 1 in 2023. By July 2025, the primary structure was already assembled. They're entering testing phase this summer, with full integration early next year for May 2026 launch. Compare that to NASA's timeline. They've been planning ISS replacement for over a decade, with literally nothing to show for it except PowerPoint presentations and missed deadlines. How is VAST moving this fast? The answer reveals everything wrong with NASA's approach. No bureaucracy, no political gridlock, no million-dollar contracts disappearing into committee meetings. Pure startup logic. Test, fail, fix, repeat at Silicon Valley speed. But here's the most shocking part. Before Haven 1 launches, Vast is pulling off something NASA never thought of. Haven Demo launching this summer. It's a small satellite that's basically a space dress rehearsal for every system that'll keep astronauts alive. This isn't just testing. It's proving to the world that private companies can now do what only governments could do before. Every power system, every communication array, every life support component is being validated in orbit right now. On July 11th, VAS completed testing on the power distribution unit, the electric heart that routes solar power to every system. Radio communications, navigation, engines, computers. Everything checked out perfectly. While NASA's contractors are still arguing about specifications, VAST is actually flying hardware. Here's what makes this story so explosive. NASA had every possible advantage. Unlimited taxpayer money, 60 years of experience, thousands of the world's best engineers, and they still can't replace a dying space station. VAST had crypto money, startup mentality, and 50 people willing to challenge everything NASA considered sacred. The result? They're about to launch humanity's first luxury space hotel while NASA's still trapped in endless committee meetings. But here's the question that's keeping NASA administrators awake at night. If a startup can build a better space station in two years, what does that say about everything NASA's been doing wrong for decades? There's something profound happening here that goes beyond engineering specs. Drew Fustel, a veteran NASA astronaut with over 200 days in space and multiple spacewalks, guided Haven 1's design. He knew exactly what NASA got wrong. They forgot astronauts are human beings, not machines. On the ISS, astronauts sleep by floating around in sleeping bags like ghosts or wedging themselves into tiny cabinets. Haven 1 has inflatable beds with gentle pressure systems. There's a common area with a deployable table where astronauts can actually eat meals together like civilized humans. As Vast's CEO put it, we go to space to work. If you feel better, you work better. It's almost embarrassing that NASA, with all their psychology research, missed something this obvious. When SpaceX agreed to launch Haven 1, it wasn't just a business deal. It was Elon Musk's company betting on Vast's vision over NASA's bureaucratic disaster. SpaceX, the company that revolutionized space travel by doing what NASA said was impossible, chose to partner with another company doing what NASA says is impossible. This partnership represents something bigger. The future of human space exploration isn't being written in NASA's conference rooms anymore. It's being built in startup warehouses by people who refuse to accept that space has to be uncomfortable, expensive, and glacially slow. Here's a technical detail that shows how vast out-engineered NASA. Haven 1's life support system operates at 300 bar of pressure. That's 4,351 pounds per square inch. To put that in perspective, that's like having three car engines worth of pressure contained in systems the size of kitchen appliances. NASA's ISS system, nowhere near this efficient. Vast achieved this using techniques borrowed from SpaceX's Raptor engines the same full-flow stage combustion cycle that NASA said was impossible until SpaceX made it routine. This isn't just engineering, it's proof that NASA's that's not how we do things mentality is exactly what's holding back human space exploration. The Starlink integration isn't just about faster internet, 
It's about fundamentally changing how space research works. Imagine uploading terabytes of scientific data in minutes instead of months. Imagine researchers on Earth collaborating in real time with astronauts conducting experiments above them. Haven One will be broadcasting live 4K video of scientific experiments, while NASA's astronauts are still dealing with pixelated video calls that cut out every few minutes. This connectivity advantage alone could accelerate space-based research by decades. So here we are, NASA, with unlimited resources and 60 plus years of experience, can't replace a space station that's literally falling apart. VAST, a crypto-funded startup that didn't exist three years ago, built a luxury space hotel that made SpaceX executives do double takes. This raises the most uncomfortable question in aerospace. If NASA can't keep up with startups funded by cryptocurrency profits, what happens to America's leadership in space? Are we witnessing the end of government-led space exploration or just the beginning of NASA's complete irrelevance? The answer might be floating 250 miles above us in May 2026, wrapped in maple wood panels and connected to the internet. So there you have it. While NASA burns through taxpayer billions on endless committees, a crypto billionaire just built the future of human space exploration in two years. Haven One isn't just a space station. It's proof that the old way of doing things is dead. But here's what really gets me excited. This is just the beginning. If VAST can embarrass NASA this badly with their first try, what happens when dozens of private companies start competing? We're not just watching the birth of space hotels. We're witnessing the complete transformation of how humanity explores the cosmos. The question isn't whether private companies will dominate space anymore. The question is, how fast can they make NASA's approach completely obsolete? Speaking of the future, what do you think happens next? Will NASA finally wake up and compete, or will they become as irrelevant as the space shuttle? Drop your predictions in the comments, because honestly, even I can't predict how wild this space race is about to get. And if you're as blown away by this story as I am, we've got more mind-bending space content coming your way. Hit that subscribe button, because trust me, the space industry is moving so fast that missing even one week means missing the next revolution. What's your take? Are we witnessing NASA's funeral or their wake-up call? Shocked SpaceX engineers just watched China do the impossible. While Elon builds $100 million mechanical arms to catch rockets, China's using nets. Actual fishing nets to snag multi-ton rockets falling from space at 500 miles per hour. Plot twist, Elon tried this exact method and called it too crazy. But China's test footage just went viral, and now everyone's asking, did SpaceX just abandon the breakthrough that could change everything? Let's dive right in. February 2019. Deep inside SpaceX's Hawthorne facility, a classified meeting was taking place. On the table, grainy surveillance footage from a Chinese aerospace company called Space Transportation. The images showed something that made Elon Musk's top engineers go completely silent. A rocket stage falling from the sky, straight into a giant net. This is exactly what we rejected three years ago, one engineer whispered. The room erupted. Some called it brilliant. Others predicted catastrophic failure. But everyone knew one thing. If China pulled this off, everything would change. September 2024. The video hit social media like a digital earthquake. A sleek rocket stage looking suspiciously identical to SpaceX's own Starship design descended through clouds with surgical precision. Variable thrust engines fired in perfect sequence. Aerodynamic flaps adjusted micro-movements. Then came the moment that stopped the aerospace world cold. The rocket didn't land on a pad. It didn't crash into the ocean. Instead, it fell gracefully into a massive dual net system. An upper net for initial capture, a lower net for impact absorption. Like a circus act performed with multi-ton spacecraft traveling at 500 miles per hour. The technical community went berserk. Comments flooded in, impossible physics. This violates everything we know. If this works, SpaceX is finished. But buried in those comments was one that changed everything. 
Wait, didn't SpaceX try this exact method years ago? Here's where the story gets explosive. Leaked internal memos from 2018 reveal SpaceX didn't just consider the net recovery method, they actively developed it for six months. Codenamed Project Trapeze, the initiative consumed $50 million and involved SpaceX's most brilliant minds. They built scale models, ran computer simulations, even tested prototype nets with quarter-scale rocket stages. The project made it all the way to Elon Musk's desk with a 200-page technical report. The conclusion? Net recovery could reduce infrastructure costs by 90% and enable rocket operations from virtually anywhere on Earth. So why did Musk kill it? One sentence buried on page 187, recommended termination due to precision requirements exceeding current guidance system capabilities. Translation, SpaceX's computers weren't smart enough to pull it off. Yet, let's break down exactly what China is attempting and why it's either genius or suicide. SpaceX's Mechazilla system costs $150 million per tower. Each installation requires 18 months of construction, 2,000 tons of steel, and can only operate from fixed locations. The catch arms move in real time, compensating for any flight path deviations within milliseconds. China's net system? Potentially $15 million total cost. Deployable anywhere on Earth within 48 hours. But here's the terrifying part. Zero margin for error. The rocket must hit a target area measuring exactly 50 meters by 30 meters. That's smaller than a football field. Missed by even two degrees, and you've got a 200-ton projectile creating an underwater crater. The precision required makes landing on an aircraft carrier look simple. Material scientist Dr. Elena Rodriguez from Caltech ran the numbers, and her conclusion was chilling. This shouldn't be possible with any known technology. The forces involved are absolutely devastating. During SpaceX's early Starship tests, the rocket's thrust literally destroyed concrete launch pads, melting steel and creating underground shockwaves.